Hey guys, so we just came in from outside, picked some blackberries, we're gonna make some blackberry jam. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fresh blackberries. Ooh yeah, smell those. Anyways, we're gonna wash these, which we've already done. You wanna run cold water over them and let them soak for about five minutes and then you just strain them a few times. I mean, get all the bugs and debris off. Any of the floaters, you wanna get rid of those too. So we're gonna take these, we're not gonna measure them yet. So now that we've got the blackberries in the bowl, we're gonna use this masher Let's just mash them up. Quick side note, so today we're going to be making a seedless blackberry. If you're not doing a seedless blackberry jam, you don't need to do this step. So we're just straining out the seeds, mashing it up, and just going to collect the juice. As you can see, we've got a little bit of blackberry juice down here, and we're going to do a second part strain with our metal strainer. This is going to catch the fine seeds that get through. So while we're mashing our blackberries, we want to sterilize our jars for our yield. So let's just set aside a few and uh, we're gonna use our air fryer to sterilize ours. So let's just take a step over here. And we're just gonna set them in our air fryer. Uh, we're just gonna bake and we want them to be 220. Um, so let's just set that up and we can hit start. And we want it to be 220 for about eight minutes. So we're gonna let that warm up and I'm just gonna predict that we're gonna get, let's just set aside like six of these. I don't know if we'll get six, but we definitely want to have enough. So we'll take the lids off and prep these. And we want to just set them in the heat for like I said, eight minutes. All right. So we've strained the berries and then we've done a double strain. Let's go ahead and measure our yield. This is gonna tell us how much sugar we're gonna need. So we've got, right here is two cups. So we're just gonna go ahead and empty that right here. And another two cups, which equals four cups. All right, and let's go ahead and Get the last little bit out of here. And that looks like about two thirds. So let's just round up. Let's just go to five cups. All right, so we know our yield is five cups. So let's just go ahead and put that in our 
saucepan. You want your saucepan to be bigger, obviously more space than what you're boiling because we want this to be a roaring boil, which means it's probably gonna go about two inches of foam at the top. You don't want it to overflow, it's gonna be a mess. So you've got equal portions. So five cups of juice and we need five cups of sugar. So there's two. Let's go ahead and put the other three in. All right, so we're stirring this. We've got it running on medium high. We're just gonna let it simmer, and we want it to be a roaring boil, like I mentioned before. But, if you have fresh lemons, use fresh lemons. We have a lemon extract. You wanna do about half a tablespoon per cup. So let's just do, what did I say, five cups? And let's just do, there's one, two, three, four, and five. Kind of eyeballing it there. You want to, you can add a little salt, just a little flavor enhancer, just a little dash. There we go. Could add a little salt. And this is citric acid. This is going to help your preserves stay fresh and have that lasting flavor a year or even six months, a year or six months down the road. So what we're going to do is just add a splash of this. Not too much because it's very powerful. There you, go. And you can actually taste this if you want if you're brave. Alright, so as you can see, it's starting to warm up. We're getting a little bit more foam on the top. You want this to be a roaring boil that you cannot stir down. So it needs to be um, extremely hot. You want it to kind of um, thicken. <laughs> Sorry, we got a, our little dog down here. He's tickling my, my hand. But as I was saying, you want to stir it down. Uh, you want it to boil so that you can't stir it down. So we're almost there. It's going. Whoa! Oh, that's that roar I was talking about. All right, so let's reduce that heat. Let's just turn ours off. Little British trick. And it says if you add just a dollop of butter to your jam, it will reduce the foam on the top. So we're gonna try that. So let's go ahead and take our little sample. This is very, very foamy. Here we go. And let's just set that to the side for a minute or two to let it cool. This is extremely hot. So this is the consistency that you wanna see with your jam. It's globby and it's already starting to set up. It's not thinning or anything like that. So this is what we're gonna jar.
Now that we've got our blackberry jam in jars, you want to let it sit at least 24 hours before cracking it open and enjoying it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, because you are part of it.